W four L X F W F K. <laughs> That's the first code, huh? <laughs> What's going on, guys? We are live. Welcome to Beastly Thought Show. I'm psyched. You guys psyched? You guys ready? You guys ready to get going? Let's do this. Let's Absolutely. Do this. Let's do this right now. Yes. yes. <laughs> right now. Right now. We got a ton of news to talk about. Robbie it has been busy in the news. Uh, we got new stuff to introduce. Uh, we got a new Twitch channel that we want to introduce to everybody. Uh, I believe the web address for that is twitch.tv backslash beastly thoughts. We will yep. be live streaming there. Uh, we're going to start doing the show there next week, so it'll be simulcast on YouTube and on Twitch, so anybody can watch it on either platform, depending on your choice. Uh, we're also going to be live streaming some video games there. When we play together, I believe that's where we're going to do it. Yeah. Uh, we're really excited about the new Twitch channel. Uh, Robbie was so kind as to set it up. Thank you, Robbie, very much. Absolutely. Thank you, Robbie. You, you are the man. Yep. The myth. The legend. He is. He's, the, he's the back end of the Beastly Thought Show. Yeah, so where all the smelly stuff comes from. <laughs> no, that's not true at all. <laughs> so we got a ton to t talk about today, but first, let's talk about what we've been playing. Robbie, why don't you go first this week? What are you, Absolutely. What are you to? This week I've been playing a lot of Destiny, getting back into it, doing the strikes, doing Crucible, a lot of lag banner, I'd call it. Uh, it's not exactly in a great condition, but it's been fun. Also been playing Arkham Knight, doing the side missions, and that's been about it. Have you gotten a chance to play any Trials of Osiris yet? No, I haven't. Okay, what level are you? 34. 34. So you're there. You're ready. Of it's course, time. yeah. It's time. you got to get off that hump, man. you got to get in there. Mm -hmm. where the men are separated from the potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know which I am. Okay. we got to get to the lighthouse, man. That is super fun. I'd definitely love to try it out. Yeah, if we uh, get a team together, it would be fun. Yeah, the lag issue is way less in there, too, because it's it's a connection-based matchmaking system, so it's not skill-based like it is in the Iron Banner. And i got to agree with you, the Iron Banner this week, I think more than other weeks, is lag-heavy. It's really, really rough. Like, you see people just warping across the map. You shoot somebody, and they're kind of standing still in place, and they got full health. It's like, what just happened? Yeah. It's really messy. Yeah. Yep. All right, so, Beastly, what have you been up to? I've been playing The Witcher, I've been playing Dead Rising 3, I've been playing The Last of Us, I've been playing, oh, I, I'm getting State of Decay tomorrow for Xbox One. It's a game I always wanted to to uh, play, and I made arrangements today, and it'll be here tomorrow. And uh, that's pretty much been it. I still, I'm waiting for Batman, I'm in the middle of Witcher, Kate's farther than I am now in The Witcher, which is sad. She's been talking mad shit to me lately because I've been playing The Last of Us, and she's slowly gotten farther than me in The Witcher. And so mm -hmm. when I saw that happen, I had to put The Last of Us aside and get back into The Witcher. So right now, that's what I'm doing. But there's so many games and so little time. I didn't get a chance to play really any Destiny this week. I think we went through The Prison of Elders twice this week. And, of course, that's always fun. I still haven't tried any of the, the PvP stuff in The House of Wolves. I'm looking forward to at least trying that. And yeah. that's been my week. Yeah, we got to get you at least up to, like, level 32 so you can jump into the Trials of Osiris. Yeah. That would be a lot of fun. You, you should well, be getting gear well, from the Prison Elders, right? Yeah, I got a lot of nice gear. Mm -hmm. and, and, and last week we planned on getting together and doing that, but the, the, the cards didn't fall where they needed to for that to happen, so hopefully we can hopefully do some of that this week. The yeah, three of us get together and go do that, yeah. So and, I, like Robbie, have been playing uh, the uh, Salty Potato Iron Banner. <laughs> Has it, it really is, been that bad? It is bad this week. I'm telling it's you, really I don't understand rough. why it's so bad. Uh, maybe there's less people playing it this week, so it has to uh, search wider and further for for connections. I don't know. It doesn't. It's not like the old Call of Duty games where it actually tell you how many people were playing the playlist that you're in. Um, but man, it is it's rotten in there. But I also I think play. It might have connected to that Zimbabwe internet. Like it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> it is bad in there. Um, and I gotta agree with you. It's like you, you just you shoot a guy like you shoot a guy with a shotgun. He doesn't go down. So you melee him, and he's just standing there. So you melee him again twice, 
And then wow. he's like, whoop! And then you're like, all right, oh, this guy's not going to die, so you walk away and he shotguns you in the back. <laughs> what? <laughs> yep. It's really bad. Yeah. Uh, I've never heard of this kind of issue in Destiny, man. Oh, man, it's it's rotten in there. So they, I, I feel like Destiny has got some issues with their matchmaking system. I, it's the same type of lag that you used to see in Halo where you trade kills, right? That's not something you'd ever see in Call of Duty because it's a different kind of networking code that Call of Duty uses. It's like nobody ever trades kills in Call of Duty. It's always one guy gets the kill every All time. All the time, yeah. But in Destiny, it's like if it's close, then they just kind of kill both people. And that can be frustrating. Uh, I don't know which one I prefer because Call of Duty it just felt like you got robbed and the other guy's you know, continuing on his kill streak. So I can't really say which one I prefer, <laughs> but I know that it don't feel right now. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I'd have to go with Call of Duty because at least in Call of Duty, you know that the person who died first, the other person shot first, usually. No, you don't, <laughs> you don't know that. You don't. You definitely don't know that. That's how it feels. When I mean, that's first. probably how it's supposed to feel. But yeah, the, with the internet, what it is, with lag being what it is, it's like you're talking about, you know, five milliseconds between, you know, input and you know, when a bullet should land, right? But it, it could be that you have 80 milliseconds of lag on your, you know, and that, that that's a big difference, right? And that could be the determining factor in a gunfight. I, I remember there were all sorts of tricks back in the day in Call of Duty. Like, people would up, start uploading uh, something to their YouTube channel just so they would get host. Uh, you know, like, there's all sorts of tricks in Call of Duty to get, to get host and to have a better lag experience. Bad Man. stuff. Yeah, in Destiny, though, it's more noticeable. There's been many times where I killed someone, or they killed me, and I thought I killed them, and then as I, as I die, then they die. I'm like, what the hell happened? It just confuses me sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I, it definitely needs some work in the lag compensation front. I don't know how to solve it, though. You know, it's like inter the Internet is what it is, and... It is what it is. That's how, that's how you solve it. And, <laughs> yeah. But before we continue with the news, Briar, I wanted to congratulate you on 28,000 subscribers, man. That is an amazing thing, uh, and, and to me, it's amazing because I know where you were about a year ago. Yeah. I think I think you're the man. God bless you. God bless America. Fourth of July just happened. Yeah. And, and uh, 28,000, man. That is something to really be proud of. And as a friend, I just wanted to tell you, I'm so proud of you, man. Thank you, man. It, you know, it's been the last month has actually been insane. It, it was a month ago that I hit 20,000, right? So it's been 8,000 subscribers in 30 days, which is insane. Wow. Did someone, like, prick your finger and, and tell you to drop some blood on some paper and write your name in, at any time in the last few months? I had this little bauble that I buried uh, at a crossroad. Um, said some prayers backward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, it's been fun. You know, It's the channel's growing really fast. It's really gratifying. It's fun to see. Uh it's just been a lot of fun lately. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. So, Shall we move to the news? There's, there's a lot so. of news. A lot of news this week. Uh, and uh, this is for people... Well, Robbie, you talked about this earlier, that a lot of people don't like the Arkham Origins game that came out that wasn't actually developed by Rocksteady. Why don't you go on with this news? Yeah, so this week, I think it was on Monday... Um, an a, uh, anonymous source claimed that the Batman Arkham Origins developer, which was Warner Brothers Montreal, they're developing a brand new open world game, like a brand new IP as well for PS4 and Xbox One. Obviously, they're going to be working on their next game because Arkham Origins came back in 2013, so it's been a couple years. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people hate on Arkham Origins for some reasonable, some not so reasonable, but we'll see how it is. I think they're good developers, so we'll see how it turns out. Yeah, I, I gotta agree with you there. I think they were able to take the Arkham series and at least continue the feel of it. A lot of people say it didn't live up to the to the extravagant nature of the the two previous, but I thought that it did lend itself to the series fairly well. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what they're gonna do on their own with a new IP versus. I mean, it still felt like an Arkham game, and it's just the problem was the bar was set so high because the Rocksteady games were so amazing. Like it's really hard to live up to that, and I thought they did a really good job. Like as a game itself, just looking at Arkham Origins without the other games, it was still a great game, and. Warner Brothers Montreal is definitely a really good developer. They're 
pretty new developer, so we'll see what they do. They're doing something completely different, it sounds like, which is awesome. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Any thoughts, Briar? No. Mo- moving on. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> nothing positive to say, just like my mom said. If you got nothing nice to say... Don't say <laughs> nothing, Briar. That's good. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> You're growing right. up, Briar. <laughs> so, did you guys ever get into the Mafia series, Mafia 1, Mafia 2? I played Mafia 2. I thought it was pretty cool. It I played Mafia was. 2 and loved it. That game was one of the best games no one played. It was obviously very similar to GTA, but it was set in like that 1940s Mafia-style New York. It was really cool. Really enjoyed that game. I, I really liked it. I thought that it was going in a direction that GTA, I felt, needed to go, actually. And uh, it appears that Mafia 3's reveal is imminent as Take-Two registers several domains related to the game. So this is something that looks like it's going to happen pretty soon. You guys excited for a reemergence of the Mafia series coming to current-gen consoles? Definitely. I think it's great to see another Mafia game because Mafia 2 is fantastic as it was. Not many people played it. Not many people talked about it. It was a very underrated game for the time, and I'm really looking forward to a third game. It is going to be on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, so no last-gen. Obviously, we shouldn't even be talking about last-gen at this point. A 10-year-old Wait, console. What's last-gen? But... Yeah, I don't know what last-gen is either. We're kind of moving on from that. But, what? yeah, I just hope yeah. this game is great. We'll see. Who's the developer on this? 2K Check, I think, I want to say. Yeah. Check. You're right. They, what's like their... Check for what have they done? They've done the Mafia games. They've done... Uh, they, um, they were buying Mafia 1 and 2? I think they worked on Bioshock 2, I want to say, as well. Like they, They're a good developer. They have a good track record. So I'd say uh, bets are good on Mafia 3. The thing here is, games like GTA 5 that have really kind of changed the scope of the world, uh, It's it, you've got to really revolutionize this, this genre of game. GTA 5 has gone above and beyond the scope of what anyone was... Uh, really ready for in, in one of these, quote, God games where you're able to do pretty much anything you want. It's just so much meat on the plate. Uh, and I hope that Mafia, even though it's set in a different time zone, is able to uh, match that. Because in GTA V, you can literally spend days doing other things other than playing that game. Mm-hmm. You can literally just fucking skydive, ride a bike, go deer hunt. Just, it's just so many things that you can do. So that being uh, one of the most popular games in the world right now, hopefully Mafia learns something from that and sticks to what makes makes Mafia good as well as opens it up to other possibilities to give gamers other, you know, other avenues of entertainment. Yeah, imagine like the heist equivalent in Mafia. That'd be oh, really wow. cool. That would yeah. be awesome. I would love to see that. Or just recreation set in the 40s. Can you guys imagine what they did back then for recreation compared to what we do now? And and to articulate that into a game and make it fun, I think that would be really awesome. Things that we have no idea even existed, you know? Yeah, that could be cool. The rumor, too, is that this is going to be set in um, New Orleans. What do you guys think of that? I like that. As long as... uh, As long as Lil Wayne isn't there, I'm I'm, I'm happy. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. You know, it's hard to talk too much about a game that we haven't seen anything of. But I did like Mafia too. It, it didn't blow me away, but it was fun. And yeah. I don't even think I finished it to be honest with you. But I did like it. Uh, and under next gen, you know, I think that there's there's a lot more they can do with an open world game with the newer consoles, the more powerful hardware. And I'd like to see a company start to expand on that because it. I think the the possibilities are kind of wide open. Bigger worlds, more detailed, more rich. Like we saw Fallout 3, see how detailed that world is. Like you have that kind of that kind of level of detail in like a mafia New Orleans world, that'd be fun. That'd be really wow. fun. That would be phenomenal, man. Oh, the future is now. The future is now, Skynet. All right, so moving on, guys. Uh, this news actually hit me in the heart. I found out about this the day before yesterday and immediately had to make a video about it. Nolan North hints towards the sequel of The Last of Us. Now, Nolan North was recently at the MetroCon, which is another convention, and uh, he was sitting on, on the stage, sitting on a table, casually, and uh, someone asked him in the audience, was he working on anything else with Naughty Dog? And he said, the, oh, I want to try to paraphrase, he said, the only thing I know that we're working on is The Last of Us 2. He said, but my character met an untimely demise in The Last of Us, so I don't know what role I'll be reprising. And uh, then he went on to make some jokes about the PS3 and the PS4. This was earth-shattering news to me. Uh, I don't know if Nolan North intended to break the ice or if he got the okay uh, from Druckmann and and Bruce Straley to let 
the audience at the MetroCon know, but this was huge news. A lot of people have been wondering if this is going to happen. I personally thought it was going to happen for a long time just based on the business aspect of what The Last of Us did, a game that wins that many awards, is, has that much critical and commercial acclaim that people are so hungry for it. I kind of thought for a long time this was, this was going to come. It was in the works. But it appears now that Nolan North, the voice of Nathan Drake himself, has uh, spilled the beans. What are you guys' thoughts on this? I think Last of Us 2, even before this, like... There's no way this isn't happening. There's definitely going to be a sequel. I mean, you just talk about The Last of Us, how everyone loved that game. It was an amazing feat for the seventh generation of consoles, probably one of the best games of that generation. Honestly, one of the best games I think I have ever played. It was just incredible start to finish. Everything about that game is phenomenal. A sequel makes so much sense because, obviously, The Last of Us was huge for Sony as a new IP. It sold millions of copies. Everybody loved it. It was incredible success. Like, there's no way they're not doing a sequel to this. I don't know if it'll be Joel and Ellie's story continued. Honestly, I'd love to see that because it was kind of a cliffhanger ending. I love those characters so much, but well, who knows? There'll definitely be a sequel, though. I think so. Mr. Rabbit? Yeah, I mean, it's in inevitable, right? They're definitely making a sequel, but it kind of I'm getting the impression that either it's super early in development or he's not involved in it, right? So we could take one of two things away. Either, A, it's super early in development, like, you know, they haven't even started bringing him in to, like, do any of the voice work, or B, he's just not in it, so it's going to star new people. It's going to be a brand new story in that world, which I think I would prefer, right? Mm -hmm. Well, well, you got to take into account his character in the original died, so he would be reprising or starting off as a whole new character either way, but the way that Naughty Dog has been working recently... Well, I mean, they could have done a prequel, they could do you know, they could do uh, inside, like a side story, they could do all sorts of stuff with that same character. Just because he's dead in the end of the first one, no spoilers, dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, he kind of spoiled it too, but I'm sorry if I spoiled it for anybody. Uh, personally... I wouldn't care either way whether or not Joel and Ellie's story goes on or if they told just a pure story of survival in this world. The world is so alive and so rich for me uh, that I wouldn't even care either way. Of course, we know the story of Joel and Ellie and why she's so pivotal to the story, but it would be just as good to me to see the story of plain, simple human survival in this, this post-apocalyptic world. Robbie, why the hell are you so happy right now? <laughs> I don't know. Just keep going. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Just keep going. Keep going. Yeah, uh, so me. This is uh, really good news for me. Uh, I'm really excited about it, and I can't wait to hear more. I don't know if, if Nolan North got in trouble, if it's possible that, uh, that Neil Druckmann and Bruce Straley got on him after this, because it seemed yeah, like it, play, right? Yeah, it seemed like he just was free with it, and he's like the first person ever to just be out there in the open, and he spoke of it in a way like everybody already knew. He said, the only thing I know of is un The Last of Us 2. And people were like, holy shit, what the hell did you just say? And so to me, it seems really weird that he would be the one to just announce it, and he's a voice actor. Uh, and I would love to know the, the background of that. But, yeah, it's really exciting, and uh, I look forward to see what happens next. He's not new to this arena. I mean, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, I I'd like to think, Yeah. But you, but you never know, you know. Who knows, maybe he had a cocktail before he did this thing. Yeah. You know, some people get excited when they drink. Mm -hmm. Moral of the story, <laughs> bitch bombs are confirmed for Last of Us 2 multiplayer. Yes! Oh, my God. Yes. That, that'd be nice if they actually came up with a good way of doing multiplayer for that game, because the last one sucked. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Come on. Get out of here. Brian, you love those bitch bombs. I know you're happy that they're in yeah. Last of Us 2 multiplayer. Confirmed right here. You heard it first. Thing. All right, so we had the bitch bomb incident, right? <laughs> Basically, you can just like leave invisible bombs, and everybody who walks by just dies, right? It's like got to be the most annoying mechanic ever in a multiplayer game. But then oh. I'm talking to Beastly months later, and he's like, "Oh yeah, now you can buy a bow and arrow. That's a one-shot kill. It's the most powerful weapon in the game. So you basically have a pay-to-win weapon in there too." It's, it's like, no, why it's, you not, still it's, that? A, it's not a one-shot kill. It makes you bleed out. You have to heal immediately, or you bleed it's out. Thorn. It's basically Thorn. Yeah. yeah, it's Thorn. <laughs> All right. It's overpowered as hell. Yeah, and, uh, it's oh, Thorn. Man. Yeah, but I'm not bitter. <laughs> hey, you don't <laughs> sound like it. on that. I gotta agree with Robbie. I think it was one of the most stunning things we saw out of the last generation. It was amazing. 
awesome. Yeah, you can't deny that game is no. like, so incredible. refreshing to hear Brian it, it, say that. <laughs> it was amazing. All right. All right, so moving on, guys. This is actually really good uh, to hear because we as a community have a really loud voice, and sometimes you may think you don't, but if, if we're adamant about something and we all come together and peacefully protest or insist on something, our voices can can make a change. And Shuhei Yoshida actually was a person who uh, spoke about this, but he said the, they said that The Last Guardian probably would have never happened without the fan support, according to Sony, and Shuhei Yoshida actually spoke about this. I'm so happy that everybody stayed on their ass about this, because if they didn't, we would have ended with Shadow of the Colossus, which is an amazing game, but I wanted more of that, and I'm really happy that everybody kind of stayed with it and stayed with the times and continually asked Sony, where is this game? Are we going to see this game? And they stayed on it. Yeah, I think it's just, I can't believe it was never canceled. I mean, it's been in development how long now? Timiko hasn't released a game in 10 years. It's, he's, been in it's, development for, he's been in development turmoil for nine years. Yeah, but I think just it's incredible to see that obviously Sony cares about it a lot and they can tell that everybody wants this game and people care about it a lot. Like a lot of people love Shadow of the Colossus and Nico. Those are very beloved games and it's amazing that Sony um, stuck with it. They've been developing the game this whole time. I really respect this decision and I'm... So surprised because from a business standpoint, they would have canceled this game years ago. But they stuck with it, and uh, well, props to you, so that's amazing. Well, th my, my thoughts on this is this. This game has to make a ton of money because if you, you've got to take into account that the studio was paying their employees all this time for nine years to develop this game. It's not like they sat at home and, and ate cornflakes for nine years. They, they worked. And so Sony is banking on all that money that was basically spent on the development of this game, uh, turning into a, a plethora of dough when it actually comes out as released. And if it's anything like the um, Shadow of the Colossus or Eco games, it's, people are going to eat it alive. I might well, eat it alive. Well, eat Shadow of the Colossus alive. Oh well, I think I think that Shadow, I think Shadow of the Colossus was more uh, critically acclaimed and commercially, but I think Eco people too. Not, People now know of what these games meant and how awesome and amazing they were after the fact. So now they have a much broader audience of people who are really excited about them versus when Shadow of the Colossus or Eco first came out. They had nine years to marinate in the stew of what what used to be. So I don't know. Am I the only one who's a little bit worried about this game? Like the no. free demo didn't impress me. It, it, it was cool, but it wasn't like knock my socks off. It obviously it took them nine years to make this. <laughs> Nothing like that was going through my brain. <laughs> it took him nine years to make a four-minute gameplay demo. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, uh, like I'm, I'm, I'm definitely gonna check it out when it comes out. But I, I think that the world is very reminiscent of the worlds they've already crafted. But I'm more yeah. interested in the story. I can tell that the game is very far along in development just by the way it looks. Everything seems to work really well. Uh, but. I've noticed some parallels between the Shadow of the Colossus, Eco Games, and this game. Like the, the young boy, he looks almost identical to the main protagonist in the game, Eco. And uh, there were. What time in 2016 do you guys think this game will come out? Like, do you think it'll be a fall game, or will it be before that? Uh, I'd probably say fall. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna guess spring 2016. I'm gonna guess either that or like June-ish kind of area. That's my guess. I doubt they're gonna hold it another year. There's no way. I hope it's a spring game. That'd be cool. Yeah. Well, That's at what this I'm point, say. wait long enough. Or, I mean, I'd, I'd prefer it as soon as possible, but it's one of those situations where I don't want to get myself too excited and hyped up and then find out that it's going to be another 12, 16 months. So just, I'll be happy whenever. I thought happens. you were going to say years at the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I was like, no, no, not again. <laughs> that was a concept video. Uh, that's what we're shooting for. <laughs> 2025. Yeah. Uh, we TV. Hope. All right, so one of you guys want to continue on with our news? Warner Brothers knew about Bar Batman Arkham Asylum's... <laughs> no, I don't want to continue. <laughs> Warner okay. Brothers knew about Batman Arkham Knight's issues on PC for months. Yeah, this uh, sucks. Yeah, so this comes from uh, basically reports that... Uh, they had what eighty days to make this port? Is that apparently? Is that yeah, from what I've yeah, heard, eighty days. Uh, yeah. um, <clears throat> so the thing was rushed through development, right? It was it was given to Iron Galaxy to port to the PC. 
Uh, and there's just no way you can port a game that quickly and come out with a good product. So it looks like everybody knew this was going to be shitty, uh, but they pushed it out anyway. And, uh, you know, that's up to you. How do you feel about that? This is so shady to me. Like, the fact that I was watching some of the old videos when they were showing the game off on PC, like, running at 60 frames, and now we realize that it was sped up. Like, you could kind of tell the enemy's <laughs> voices sounded like chipmunks. This does... This is so shady. Like, I am just so disappointed in Warner Brothers for doing this. Like, what an, what a dick thing to do to PC gamers. This is just not okay. You should not have to accept this if you're playing on PC. The, the, I don't on. think they. I don't this think they is have very pathetic. There's there's been a myriad of refunds issued, and mm -hmm. uh, until this thing gets fixed, nobody on PC is going to be worried about it. So at least they backed up and took a step back and said, "Hey, we're going to stop uh, sales of the PC version." But I think honestly, they should have not released it in the state it was in. They said that that it was just like this months ago. You yeah, know, nothing has changed. So. And they didn't give a shit. They're like, we're going to make our money. Who cares? Push it out. We'll patch it later. And that is such an asshole way <clears> to think <throat> about it. Come on. like PC gamers are super psyched about Steam's refund policy right now. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> just the right time. Oh, All right, man. what do we got next? So uh, this story kind of has me really anxious to grab this game on my Xbox One. Uh, Pre-order Fallout 4 on Xbox One, you get a copy of Fallout 3 free thanks to backwards compatibility. What do you guys think about this? I went and uh, pre-ordered Fallout 4 as soon as that was available. Yep, like I know I'm getting that game. I'm sure we're... Like we all know we're getting Fallout 4, right? Like you know that game all... is going to be an event when it comes out. You're getting that on day one. Might as well pre-order it. And I get Fallout 3 with it too? Come on, that game is incredible. But you Absolutely. already have Fallout 3. Everybody here has Fallout 3. So that's the thing that, that doesn't really excite me too much. The thing that excites me is whether or not we're going to be able to have mods as soon as the PC mods are available. That's what I want to I got hear. a fucking Pip-Boy coming. I'm going to put it right on my wrist. <laughs> Did you pre-order that version? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Fuck yeah! I can't find it. Man. It's, it's too late for me. I can't find yeah, it. Went, it was too late for me, too. So. I went to GameStop yesterday yesterday morning, and they were like, oh, we don't have any more of those. So I was like, you piece of shit. Well, keep your eyes open, because sometimes they come back in stock. All right. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in that, I, that's, I don't care. You know, Fallout 3, I already have a copy of Fallout 3. I actually have two copies. I have a PC copy and I have a Xbox 360 copy. Uh, same with New Vegas and all the DLC for both games. I love Fallout and I can't wait for this next game. No, uh, go I gotta ahead. ask you this, Briar. If Fallout 4 came out today, yeah. would you play, would you take a break from Destiny to play this? Yeah, man. Fallout is one of the best series in the world. Would you it's, give it's up Destiny amazing. when Fallout 4 comes out this November? You would? Will I give it up? No, I won't give it up. <laughs> I don't, okay, well, you stop to playing give temporarily anything. to play Fallout, then. What's that? Give it up. Will I stop so playing stop Destiny? No, Destiny I'll, I'll do both. No, temporarily, I mean. Like, just to kind of immerse yourself in that world. Um, no, I'll, I'll do both. <laughs> you I tried, guys. TVs. I tried. You have two flat screens side by side. Maybe if we take away his gal horn, he'll break. <laughs> hey, there's enough. There's enough time for me to play two games, you know. And Fallout, Fallout is one of those games that you can play for years. You know, it's like if it's anything like Fallout Three was. You can just kind of continuously play that game. You know, there's so many options. There's the world is so rich. It's amazing what they did with Fallout 3. It's like you can just kind of you you can go through the story, right? But then you you get back into it and you can just start exploring the countryside and see all sorts of shit that you missed. Yeah. You know, entire quest lines that are completely side stories that you know don't, don't have anything to do with the main story or just world building. It's just pieces. like The Witcher. It's just like The Witcher 3. So yeah, like yes. I'm I'm so excited for this game. Like I can't wait. Uh, you know, like when I start talking about it, I just I get more and more amped about it. Amplitude. Yeah. I I want to give a shout out to my 14 year old Brett Jr. Honor roll student. I went in his room Friday, and I asked him what he was doing. I looked at the screen. He was playing Fallout 3. And, oh uh, yes. That is That's the thing that makes awesome. a dad so proud. Uh, so I want I want to tell you, son, I love you. Hopefully he wasn't playing it on the PS3 because that was broke as shit. <laughs> I played it on PS3 back in the day, all right. So what are you gonna say about that? Damn you, brother! I swear. <laughs> he was, wasn't he? 
Yes. Did they patch that game enough that it actually oh, works? Oh, yeah, they patched it. It works yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah, it definitely works when fine. it came out, it was broken, though. You're right. Yeah, when it came out, it was done. But I didn't play it when it first came out. I didn't even know about it. So no. I was really late to it. Yeah, I went to uh, get the Elder Scrolls, and somebody said, hey, you want to try this one instead? And I said, well, I tried it, and I took it home, and I was like, holy shit, this is the Holy Grail. This is amazing. I played it with my wife, and we loved it, and it was amazing. All right, so continuing on. NX manufacturing to begin in October. Console may launch in mid-2016, according to reports. The NX, that is the next Nintendo console. I'm so excited. <laughs> I am very surprised that it might be coming this quick. Like, I thought, I think we all thought that, obviously, the Wii U is kind of limited on its days. That console is pretty much done at this point. Obviously, NX is probably coming in 2016. I was surprised that it's coming this early, though. I thought for sure it would be a fall thing. Like, they'd come out at E3 and say, here's the NX, this is our next system coming this fall. We're going to show you all the games that's coming to it, what you can expect. Maybe it'll be a hybrid system. Yeah, who knows? But, I mean, it's being manufactured this October. If this is true, like, this system is just about finalized, and that's... Yeah. Wow. Like, that's crazy to me. I did not expect this. What do you I can't think, wait Brian? to start hearing the details about it. You remember way back in the day when we were talking about, like, the rumors of the next generation Nintendo console? Yeah. And how, I think at the time, we were calling it the Fusion. Yeah. And it was a, it was yeah. a fusion of a home console and with a portable. a portable. I really hope that comes true. And the fact that they're talking about the 3DS... And the NX or and the Wii U that they're going to continue support for that makes my hopes kind of it makes me tingle a little bit. Hey, they're talking about the 3DS too, so maybe yeah. something like a portable version of the NX is going to be a thing. You know, that Brian's makes got perfect those sense. Going on. Brian, Brian, that makes little tingles. No. <laughs> I got some tingles too. That, that I makes... don't know why this means tingles. <laughs> 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 to me, that makes perfect sense what you just said because if they did say just the Wii U, you'd think, okay, it's a home console, but the fact that they included that 3DS with it, yeah, uh, this thing might have uh, portability. Uh, I'm, as soon as I saw the uh, Nintendo uh, Direct this year, I thought that was Nintendo's farewell to the Wii U, uh, honestly. It was pretty self-evident that they, they were not doing too much to support it from this point on. They announced a handful of games. The games they did show were mediocre at best, and uh, I felt like it was kind of their fa farewell. They did start off Reggie fils by saying that um, they're going to talk about the NX next year. I'm not surprised uh, that they're going to be pulling this thing out possibly next year because look at what they did at E3. They didn't really talk about anything other than Star Fox, uh, Yoshi, and, and those games were really underwhelming for hardcore gamers. So I'm thinking that next year will probably be a good time for us to uh, expect Nintendo's new bright, shining star to come back and reclaim the world. Yeah, I think. <laughs> what would you like to see? What, what do you want to see out of it? I want to see uh, open world Mario first of all. No, uh, not for software. Out of the hardware. Yeah. Oh, I I want to see something at least on par graphically with, with what we see right now. I don't want them to come out with something that's subpar like they did with the Wii, uh, like they did with the Wii U. The mm -hmm. Wii U is subpar compared to what we have now. The Wii was subpar subpar compared to the PS3 and the. 360. I want them to be able to directly compete. That's always been Nintendo's uh, uh, their excuse. We're not directly competing. Yes, you are. You're in the same uh, field. You're in the same area of, of expertise. You make video games. You keep people excited, and you entertain people. Uh, I want to see them take the fucking bull by the horns and do what they used to do. Revolutionize games. They have some of the best games I've ever played in my life. Uh, they got amazing development teams. They're, the games that they make always work flawlessly. Uh, I want to see them marry that with the technology and uh, and really excite me in a way I haven't been with Nintendo in years. The last time I was super excited with um, the Nintendo platform was probably with the 64. You know, the 64 was probably the last time I felt true magic. When I saw Pilot Wings, when I saw Mario 64, that was it changed my life seeing that. And that, that was kind of the first time that we saw Nintendo release a system that's specs were a little bit subpar. Yeah, they were different. The 64, as time grew on, you know, the 64 versus my PlayStation, I picked the PlayStation every time, but that doesn't take away the fact that the 64 had some amazing games on it. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, software development by Nintendo is amazing. So yeah, it's so good. Uh, I want to see them step up in the hardware department to, to directly compete and say, okay, we have this game. It's coming all to all three platforms, and it's going to look just as good on our platform as it will on the PlayStation Four and Xbox One. But our Nintendo NX has this new controller because if you guys remember, Nintendo revolutionized controls. They were the first controller to have an analog stick with the Nintendo 64. They were the first controller to have motion controls. Uh, they they did some rumble. kind of crazy yeah they yeah rumble pack. They did all this stuff first, so I'm sure that they got something up their sleeve as far as the way they're going to control. I think the Wii U was a big misstep with their control. It's on my bed, actually. Um, but hopefully they can give us a traditional controller with something new that really immerses us in the experience the way they've been doing for the last 20 years. Robbie, what do you think? What would you like to see out of this? I think, first of all, the C3 showed that Nintendo clearly realizes, which is good, that the Wii U is not salvageable. Like, the system is what it is. They can't really do much more with it. The Wii U is just kind of going to live on for a few more years, and that's going to be that. But with the NX, I think what they need to do is they need, first of all, they need to have a more powerful console. At least, at the very least, be as powerful as the PS4 and Xbox One. The second thing they need to do is get those third parties back aboard. Because if you can get third-party games like Destiny and Call of Duty on a Nintendo system, plus you have your first-party IPs like Mario and Zelda, they're going to kill it. They need those two big things. If you can get your third parties and your Nintendo first parties, I mean, there's no way the system could fail. That's the biggest issue I think Nintendo has right now. They need to wake up and realize they need a dedicated gaming console, and even if it's this hybrid thing, you can take it on the road. That would be super cool. Will they be able to maintain that same power and same playability on the road as at home? Who knows, but... They have the potential to do it. I hope they just wake up and realize that uh, they need to change because the Wii U is not working. Nintendo has to kiss a lot of ass is what they got to do, to be yeah. quite honest. To, to bring the third parties back, they got to just oh, make themselves no so approachable to everyone out there. Hell, look, we'll, we'll jump through this hoop for you if you bring it to us. Yeah. And we'll do, yeah they have to. They've... I think I think we're going to start seeing... I think we're definitely going to see a console that's at least on par with the current... PlayStation 4 and Xbox One hardware, at Definitely. least. Uh, yeah. It'd be nice to see it actually surpass it by at least a step or two, right? And, you know, Ooh. these consoles are two years old now. Yeah. Uh, you know, for the same price, I think that Nintendo could release a console that is a little bit nicer than what we've got, right? Ooh. I don't think that's too much to ask. Uh, at the least, I think maybe for, you know, $250, they could release a console that has the same amount of power as the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. You know, because now they're dealing with technology that's a little bit older now. So yeah. just to get parity, I think they, they could come in at a lower cost at like $250, or if they were going to go for that $400, $350 price point, then it's got to actually outperform the PS4 and the Xbox One. Or, or, because the thing is, when you look at what they're doing with the Nintendo Wii U, it's still $300 if you go buy it brand new, which is unbelievable. Way Un too much. Well, that's, the problem there is the fact that that stupid remote, this, the tablet, the gamepad, money. Yeah. You take that out of there, the console's way cheaper. And honestly, it would be like $100, $200 that system. Way more people would buy it for right. that much. Yeah, uh, but the thing is, if, if Nintendo were to bring out a system that at 250 that would be a huge contrast compared to what they've been doing now. Or they could go back to their old ways... Well, the Wii U was bargain priced, or the Wii U was bargain priced, and the Wii U is bargain priced when you compare it to other consoles. Yeah, it is right now. Yeah. It, it, it's older too, but what I like to see Nintendo do that would be a step above what they what everybody's doing now is to have a console come out with a game for free, just straight out of the box, yeah, no yeah. bundle. Back in the day, when you buy a Nintendo, you get a Nintendo game. Yeah. You know, when you buy a Super Nintendo, you got Mario World, and it was like it still is one of the best games on the console. And when people saw that, they were like, "Holy shit, I gotta play it!" If they had an amazing NX game that people saw, an open world Mario. So you're changing the topic altogether here. Let me finish what I was saying before we move on to what you're saying. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so I'm saying e either the console has to be more powerful than the PlayStation 4 uh, for the same price, or it has to be as powerful as the PlayStation 4 at a cheaper price, right? Because they have to win over hearts and minds here. Can yeah. you do that with either better 
you know, better, more power or better pricing. Second, they need to get rid of these gimmicky controllers. I, I know that they have been innovating these controllers for a long time now, but in my opinion, the Wii was a gimmick and the Wii U was a gimmick. I know yeah. the Wii was popular. I know that the Wii Remote was popular, but it was a gimmick. Yeah. Uh, and you know, to actually play 90% of games with it, it was. I'd rather just use a controller. Yeah. The so, Wii was like lightning in a bottle. They released it at the perfect time, and people just ate it up without really realizing what it was, and mm-hmm. it didn't last. Like, they just they caught people on so quick without even really knowing what it was. Everyone bought it just all at once, and then it quickly kind of died off. <laughs> I want a real controller. I want a real controller. Yeah. Yes. And well, I want to be able to put two of them on a console, not like this tablet. <laughs> you know, that is like the worst. I, I remember yeah. hearing about that. I'm like, this thing is a disaster. You can only hook up one tablet to a Wii U. That's what you can't buy them either. It's, so they need to start courting third parties, like Beastly was saying. They need to go after them hard. They need to start signing those deals with Activision for exclusive content in Destiny, exclusive content in Call of Duty, getting that content first. They need to start writing big checks to uh, console yeah. developers to start getting, you know, releases on their console first or DLC on their console first because that's what's going to get the hardcore gamers to start buying their console again. Look how many Call of Duty players are switching over to PS4 right now because they're going to get the DLC first. Tons of them. Tons yeah. of them. Like Sony even... really learned from the last generation. If Nintendo could do Absolutely. the same, yeah, I think they can come back. Um, what if you could get the Hawkmoon 2 in Destiny first on Nintendo? Oh, shit. <laughs> that is you know a weird, weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know you want a Hawkmoon. <laughs> Briar's going to move over to Nintendo that day. <laughs> get my Hawkmoon 2 my Gallahorn 4 be standing in line <laughs> Hawkmoon my 2 my Gallahorn exclusive. Extreme do, do you guys it'll be think called it's... a Super Gallahorn yeah the Super <laughs> with more power uh, do you guys Gallahorn think it's as, do you guys think it's as hard as it appears for Nintendo to, to uh, recapture the, the trust between them and the third party developers it seems like it's been Unbelievably hard for them to to well, they, work. They keep making stupid decisions, Beastly. How? Why would you develop another version of your game for the Wii U? And have to port it down. That's to not going to sell. You yeah. know, it's not going to sell because third-party games haven't sold for the uh, name the last four Nintendo consoles. <laughs> like they just don't sell. They yeah. don't sell on Nintendo consoles. You know, people don't buy Nintendo consoles for third-party games. They buy them for Nintendo games. Yeah, uh, Nintendo has to change that. They have to figure out a way to change that. And I think if the way to do it swinging, is to start spending a shit ton of money. Yeah. Well, all they gotta do is do what Sony did this last generation with that cell processor. Sony had it so hard for developers to make games that stood up the way they did on the 360, and Sony saw that. They understood it, so they came with a more approachable system mm-hmm. with the PS4. And I think if Nintendo did that and came with a more approachable system that was powerful enough to run these games, to be on par with the PC, but at the same time pull their first-party amazing games into that library and court these third-party developers, it would be a win-win for them. It would be, it would be Nintendo again. Right now, Nintendo is a, is a shadow of their former self. It's really it's sad. Nintendo totally easily control. has the potential to come back to. Like, they, they can do it. I know they can do it. They have the money. I mean, they have more than enough money to succeed. They can buy up these third parties. They can say, look, the NX, you can get Mario, you can get Zelda, you can get all these first parties you, you love. You can get Call of Duty, you can get games. Destiny, you can get uh, Fallout 4, you can get all the games you want to play. Yeah. How would you lose with that? Like they can win. It would be a, a win-win situation for everybody. They, Gamers like, would be happy. Developers would be happy. Nintendo would be happy. It's not that hard to do this too. If they have both of those, they can win no problem. They just don't see it. They don't get it. They, like they have the hope they do. Parties, after parties, you'll dominate. They just don't get it. Yeah. Hopefully, but they, they got to release nice. hardware though, Robbie. That's compatible with these games because. Yeah, the companies, the third-party companies, don't want to release a Wii U version of the game because they gotta develop a whole different version to make it basically backwards compatible. It you know? costs yeah, more too when they have to port it down, and then they're not gonna make their money back because it doesn't right. sell anything on that system. Yeah, it's right. a waste of time. So they need Nintendo needs to support this. Okay, and the last thing I want to see out of this console is I want to see that fusion rumor come true. I want to be able to use the next version of the DS as a controller for my NX, and I want to be able to take those games, I want to buy a game once. Say you buy a game from the eShop from Nintendo, I want to buy it once, 
be able to play it on the big screen on my NX and on the small screen on my next generation DS. And right? having it like a console experience too, I, I got, on the go. I, I yeah. got a question. I want you to clarify what you mean by on the go, Briar Rabbit. Do you mean in in Wi-Fi range of your network, or do you no, mean I want it on to be road? a hard loaded copy on my next generation DS, whatever that's going to be called. Let's call it the NX DS, okay? Uh, I want that to be able to be used as a controller, in addition to the regular controllers for my NX, and I also want the games that I buy to be cross compatible if they come from the eShop. I'm not talking about Got Call you. of Duty. If Call of Duty comes out, it doesn't have to work on my NX DS. Yeah. But if I buy a copy of Castlevania 3, that damn well better yeah, work on both. Yeah, that needs to, yeah. Okay. yeah. The, there's one thing, I, I agree with everything you guys have asked for, but there's one thing I want Nintendo to not do again. Get rid of these goddamn Mies. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> yes, sick of them. I agree. I'm so, it does not, I, I'm 35, it does not feel like something that I want to engage in seeing these little cartoon pop-ups of these me characters, give us a UI that speaks to America, it speaks to the world, speaks to the hardcore. Me don't do it. It was cute and refreshing at first with the Wii. Yeah. But it's gone on too long and it feels yeah. old and outdated. It's Definitely. like, you know, they've got these damn Muppets on their, their Nintendo Directs. Nobody's into that. We're adults. We don't want to fucking play with Mies. Get rid of those. Give us My a kids UI. Nintendo gamers. That's the console they choose to play on. When they're not playing Minecraft, they turn on their Wii U. They don't play on Xbox. They don't play on PlayStation 4 because it's the it's the Nintendo games that speak to them the most. But even they don't like the Wii U, the the Mies anymore. <laughs> you know, it's like, come on, yeah. get out of here with that. I don't so, think Nintendo should focus just on the Mies though. They got a lot more to uh, work. They on. They need to focus on hardware succeed. and yes. pricing, and then they need. To Focus on third parties. Yeah, so, those are the big three. So, so the next little part of our news is Nintendo continuing to, to support the Wii U and the 3DS. Brian, you touched on that. Do you guys see an immediate price drop of these two once the NX is uh, announced? Definitely, yep. Um, there will be a price drop. They'll get them down cheap, so people will start buying them. I honestly don't believe, to be honest, that they're going to support it that much. Like, There's a big difference between saying you're going to support it and you're actually like supporting the systems. I... I don't see them supporting it much. Like they're gonna want to get onto the NX as fast as possible. They're they're gonna want to forget the Wii U. I just I, I think they're gonna kill support for it fairly quickly, kind of in a Microsoft yeah. Xbox style. They're just gonna dump it. Yeah. You know, like your old games will still work. That's fine, but we're not. There's no new games coming out for it. They want to get yeah. away from the Wii U as quickly as possible. Let's be real here. They they're obviously not gonna say that. They want to still make people happy. They're gonna say, look, we're gonna support these systems. But realistically, they're getting onto the NX, and it's very clear that that system is actually pretty close to being done. So yeah, that's uh, their future. Yes, I bet they'll support longer because there's so many of them out. Yeah. There. Yeah. There's there's 80 million 3DSs out there, so that's you can see got, that Nintendo has a hard time getting away from that platform too, because like they can't when they come out with like the next version of it, they can never name it anything else. It's like <laughs> this is just it's a DS plus, it's a DS Lite, it's a DS XL. color, it's a 3DS, it's a new it's 3DS, a DS DS. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's a Tostitos DS. It's a, you know, it's, it's still the, the new DS, Doritos it's still 3DS. The DS. You don't have to buy all new games. <laughs> but it'd be nice yeah. for them to take a clean break on the DS side too. You know, it's like start with something new. Uh, I think is it time to get away from cartridges on the DS? Like, I don't know. It's like the the Vita is very technologically advanced, but it still uses cartridges. You know, basically. Yeah, is it time to get away from that, though? They're not cartridges. They're SD cards. I think that's a big difference there. SD cards, it seems well, like there's not too many limitations with that. It's, it's a similar thing. I don't know. What 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 media would you like their uh, portables to go to, Briar? Downloads only? Download. Yeah. I think oh. digital would make sense if you can take it on the road with you and it's the same basic gaming experience. It would have to be probably digital. I don't see what kind of media we would use for that. Yeah. So. I, I think that would work as long as there's a big enough hard drive on it. Seems yeah. like these companies are scared to give you any damn space nowadays. So, so as there's I mean, an SD card slot in, it shouldn't make much of a difference. Okay. All right, so going on with our news, guys, an extremely rare prototype for what would have been Nintendo's PlayStation has been discovered. Now, I didn't get a chance to see this, mm. and I don't know if any of you guys... Yeah, take a look. Briar's going to pop uh, it up for yeah, us. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pop it up here on the screen here. 
You guys do know about that Nintendo Sony partnership, right? Like before yeah. even the PS One came out. That's yeah. basically what this is. This is the prototype for what that system was going to be, and it's super cool. Like it, it's definitely it looks super authentic. This has to be real to me. It, it well, definitely looks really good. Well, Sony wanted to have some rights with this thing, and um, let me see. So this is it. Let's see if I can expand that. Sony actually wanted to have some rights with this partnership, and Nintendo wasn't having it. And so Nintendo actually backed out and went, went to Philips with their CDI. Yeah. And uh, that's where you get the catastrophe that was Nintendo's um, Legend of Zelda. But let me stop talking so you guys can see it. So what's cool about this, right, is that it's clearly a, a amalgamation of the Super Nintendo and, like, Sony hardware, right? You can see the Super Nintendo controller there, even though it's a Sony PlayStation on it. Uh, and the, even, like, the box, it looks a little bit Nintendo-ish, a little bit Sony-ish, you know? It's but it's got a CD drive in there as well as the cartridge-based system with the SNES. Right. And you it's can see a, the, yeah, it's like that button there looks like it's that purple color that was this, the NES color. I love this. Uh, but, yeah, it's clearly, it, it looks authentic. It really does. Oh, my God. Um, so let's talk about the history of this a little bit because... Robbie, you, you talked about it a little bit just now. What this was was that at one point, uh, Sony and Nintendo were going to collaborate on a CD-based upgrade for the Super Nintendo. And this is before they even did like the PlayStation 1. Like This is before Sony even got into the... Well, this is the reason that the PlayStation, this, this is the this reason PlayStation when 1 when the Super came Nintendo out. was a thing, right? It's when yeah. the Super Nintendo was at a, the peak of its power. For some reason, and we don't know exactly why, I don't know exactly why, uh, Nintendo just dropped it. They said, mm -hmm. nope, we're not doing this anymore, and kind of left Sony high and dry. Sony started with them. Philips on the CDI, uh, and that was shitty. Uh, we got a lot of shitty games out of that. Zelda. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Sony was bitter. They were pissed off. So they decided to take... Uh, they had spent a lot of money on development of this project. They would spent a lot of time on it, and they said, you know what? Screw it. We're bringing this to market anyway. We're going to call it the PlayStation and it became the PlayStation. Oh, we, yes. we could do this all on our own, and look what happened. They had an amazing success. Yeah. Oh. I think it could go down as Nintendo's biggest, probably their biggest stumble. You know, it's it's a huge it's a huge blunder for them because not only did they miss out on you know they missed out on the you know the digital kind of media thing where you know they they continued with cartridge based games even into the next generation with the N64 mm -hmm. they missed out on having you know CD quality music in their games they missed Almost out on having cheap know. storage you know they you, and you could tell with the N64 that it, it it was missing that but they also created a competitor out of one of the most powerful brands in the world mm -hmm. at the time Sony was at the peak of its power and you know they came in, they nailed it with the PlayStation, they put a ton of money behind it, uh, and it, the gaming world has never been the same since. It yeah. changed everything, too. Like, everyone was doubting, like, Sony coming into the console race, there's no way they can do it. And look, look what happened. They made an amazing console that I grew up playing at, like, three, four years of age. I love that system. It's so dear to my heart. I love that console so much. And uh, that's what got me into gaming was the original PlayStation. I, I That console will always have a place in my heart. I love it so much. And yeah. playing Crash Bandicoot, playing oh. Final Fantasy VII, playing yes. all kinds of awesome games. They it made a ton of amazing. deals, exclusive deals, with companies that were sick of Nintendo shit. Because mm -hmm. Nintendo, even back then, was was treating third parties like super bad, right? Like, you yeah. had to pay a shitload of money to get the <laughs> Nintendo seal approval to even release a game. Uh, and then you got no support from Nintendo. PlayStation Konami changed everything for third parties. Yeah. One Let's of the big it. partnerships they got from Nintendo was Konami. Before Konami, uh, Square, were, yeah, Square. They uh, were all with Capcom. Nintendo. Capcom went to them. Capcom. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was devastating for Nintendo. And I remember when the PlayStation One first came out. I get, I get spirit fingers thinking about it. It was just a magical moment for me. Tingly. Yeah, it was really amazing because going from what the Super Nintendo was to the Nintendo 64, and then seeing the PlayStation, it was such a huge leap. I remember my Uncle Charles walking into the room, and I was playing Air Combat, which was called Ace Combat back then. And he says, is that a movie? I said, no, it's a game. I was so fucking excited. 
uh, it just changed the world. The PlayStation really did, and uh, it hasn't been the same since, like Briar said. And they've grown so much, they've learned so much, and I think that uh, PlayStation, I think, is Sony's biggest uh, financial success as a company, and I don't think that's going to change for a long time. Yeah, it's amazing really how stuff. a broken partnership led to one of the biggest juggernauts in the gaming industry. I mean, Sony is at they're one of the big three, and. That's that's crazy. This broken partnership. Sony was like, you know, we can do this on our own. We do not need them. Bam, and they killed it. And they're at this point in time too. They're still they're on top of the world. They're leading the console race. They're doing amazing. They're yeah, killing. They definitely it right stumbled now. with the PlayStation Three, but they have they have come they're out rebounding. swinging with the PlayStation Four. Yeah, PS Four is uh, is the shit this generation so far. But yeah, that's a really cool piece of history. And this guy just had it. Like he had it just sitting in his attic. And huh? yeah. They were about That's, to throw it out. He didn't yeah. realize what it was, and then someone told him, whoa, like, do not throw this out. Yeah. So, so there's only one of these things? Where are the rest there, of them? There, I believe there was... I think the article said there was 200 made ever. It's extremely rare. Like, there are but very they were few ordered destroyed. Yeah. Holy hell. Yeah. So this you may know be the only one in existence. For that? God, this, can you imagine? This may be the only one left in existence. Yeah, yeah, according to think... Wikipedia, there were only 200 produced. But huh. that number doesn't appear to come from any independent source, so we don't know. We don't know exactly. In an alternate yeah. world, I would have loved to have seen what that thing could have done as far as the comp, the the, uh, the cartridges, the fidelity of the cartridges, what they would have been able to hold. And I wonder if it would have played just regular PlayStation games. It would have well, been crazy. Had, no, it was a it was a Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. It was a Super Nintendo Plus with CD, so similar to the Sega CD. That's how it would have operated. Yeah. yeah, but the cartridge on tops didn't look like a Super Nintendo cartridge. Well, it was the Japanese version. Oh, Can you even imagine yeah. how different the gaming industry would look today, though, if the actual, like, original PlayStation didn't happen? Like, if this whole thing actually went... It would be went, different. It would be way different. It would Every be a lot of ever come into the, to it. Would Sega still be around at, at making hardware? Like, who knows? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Dude. Well, I know, when I know. Sega came out with the Saturn, they were not competing against Nintendo at that point. They were competing against PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it'd be worse, honestly, because Nintendo has mismanaged relationships, hardware so much, and if somehow they were tethered to Sony, I think they would have blundered the PlayStation at this point, you know. And, and third parties probably still wouldn't want to work with them, so there wouldn't be any games on the PlayStation. So I'm happy Sony broke away from that crap and did their own thing. I really yeah. am. It's funny too, though, because you know the same reason that the PlayStation was created was because of the hubris of Nintendo, right? And then Sony goes on to repeat exactly the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> like 20 years later, 15 yeah, years later, like, they did the same like, thing. It's incredible, like the cycle of that. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. I, yeah, that's weird. All right, so I think that's going to do it, guys. Anything? Anybody got anything else they want to talk about? I just want to tell everybody out there in the, in the, the world of YouTube that I love you. So we in my heart. Chat for any questions we got? I always forget yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah dude. Definitely a good idea. If you guys have any questions, post them down below. We will read them. Fire them quick. <laughs> Fire them quick. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't know. We should be wrapping up here. All right. Let's. right. I'm going to check out the chat right now. Let's see here. Mm, I don't see any questions. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs> We're out. You guys be easy. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any questions, send them to us on Twitter, and we will answer them in the next episode. Uh, and thank you guys very much for watching. Thank Check you. out the Twitch page, guys. One more. See you next time. W <laughs> H three N is in Nancy X three P. That's his in Peter. Oh. <laughs> He's giving them away. <laughs> All right, guys. We're out. Bye.